Welcome to the University of Iowa. My name is Vicki Grassian and I'm a professor of chemistry here. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about our perspectives article, Reactions on Atmospheric Dust, just recently published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. In this perspectives article, we talk about some newly identified reactions that we have learned from our laboratory studies that may be important in the chemistry of the atmosphere. When you think about the atmosphere, you think about gas phase reactions, maybe radical reactions that are initiated by the sun. But what you may not know is that particles play an important role in the chemistry of the atmosphere. In this perspectives article, we focus on two things, mineral dust from windblown soils, because these dust particles have uh, very reactive surfaces where a lot of rich chemistry can occur. We also discuss some newly identified reactions on what we call nanodust, very small dust particles that may be associated with uh, industrial processes, for example, the formation of engineered nanomaterials that can make their way into the environment and also undergo chemistry. Now I'd like to introduce to you my co-authors on this perspectives article, Guyane Rubin Singhegi, Jonas Baltrasadis, and Sherry Elzey, who will describe to you some of the details of the reaction chemistry that occur on atmospheric dust particles. We are here to talk about photochemistry of adsorbed nitrate. In the recent past, our research group and several others showed that the reaction between nitrogen oxides and mineral dust results adsorb nitrate over the particle surface. One can think this as a removal mechanism for the nitrogen species from the atmosphere. Therefore, we extended this work to identify possible reaction mechanisms and pathways that could potentially involve in renoxification, that is to bring adsorbed nitrate back to the gas phase. Photochemistry of nitrate was the first in a list of many different candidates. And in this work, we used a custom-made reaction setup with the transmittance FTIR as the analytical tool to probe both gas phase and surface. If I highlight some of the results of this work, narrowband photolysis results a loss of nitrate from the surface with the concomitant formation of gas phase products, including nitrogen dioxide and nitrous oxide. That varies with the experimental conditions. For an example, under dry conditions, nitrogen dioxide is a sole gas phase product, whereas under humid conditions, nitrous oxide is also formed. Interestingly, this formation of nitrous oxide, an important greenhouse gas, increases as a function of relative humidity that can be explained with heterogeneous hydrolysis of nitrogen dioxide. So here we observe surface-mediated secondary reactions of primary gas phase products. The reaction mechanisms we identified in this work is potentially significant and they define a route for the renoxification where nitric acid, once thought to be a stable reservoir species, becomes a source of NOx, which has a higher environmental impact. My name is Jonas Baltrushaitis, and I am an assistant research scientist with the University of Iowa Department of Chemistry. In this work, I've used X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy to detect the adsorbed sulfur dioxide species on titanium dioxide. Sulfur dioxide reactions on mineral dust particles is very diverse. It is known to involve many intermediate species and result in the formation of very stable sulfate, which is known to contribute to the acidic rain. Solar light, on the other hand, can contribute lots of energy for bond breaking and forming directly or through the semiconductor related band gap electronic transitions. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy is a very useful tool because it, it can detect different oxidation states of the same atom, in our case sulfate and sulfide. I've used X-ray pho photoelectron spectroscopy to detect adsorbed sulfide when sulfur dioxide was exposed to titanium dioxide particles. However, when solar light was present, it resulted into oxida complete oxidation of sulfide to sulfate. In conclusion, I've used spectroscopy techniques to investigate the absorption of sulfur dioxide on semiconductor titanium dioxide particles. 
My focus in this perspective was on engineered nanomaterials as a new source of metal-containing dust in the atmosphere, called nanodust. Nanodust is defined as dust made up of particles that have at least one dimension lower than 100 nanometers and also produced from industrial sources. Now, we know that mineral dust made up of metals and metal oxides plays a key role in the chemistry of the atmosphere. And we also know that nanomaterials have size-dependent properties which can lead to unique reactivity compared to particles of larger size. So, in this perspective, we have asked the question, Will engineered nanodust have unique reactivity in atmospheric chemistry processes compared to particles of larger size? Currently, silver is one of the most commonly manufactured nanomaterials, and it is found in more consumer products than any other nanomaterial. So in this study, we investigated the dissolution behavior of nanoscale silver particles and compared it with that of microscale silver particles as a function of pH in nitric acid conditions. We used inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy to determine the percent of silver dissolved. An interesting result of this work showed that the nanoscale silver dissolved completely in acid concentrations that were nearly 10 times weaker than the concentrations required to dissolve the microscale silver. So these results demonstrated unique dissolution behavior for nanoscale silver particles and also indicates that engineered metal-containing nanomaterials may have the potential to act as distinctive dust components in the atmosphere and react with trace atmospheric gases due to a greater propensity towards dissolution in low pH environments. In a broader scope, results from the studies like the one in this perspective contribute to the growing body of knowledge that is focusing on studying size-dependent properties and reactivity of materials at the nanoscale. Thank you for watching our video on reactions on atmospheric dust. <laughs>